Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Con Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A M P I R E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can always read my work on ESPN.com. Also, one programming note I will be doing a live stream show Wednesday night, probably eight o'clock Eastern time. The time is not finalized yet but I will be doing one Wednesday night to go over the first official day of free agency. And I say official because there's a legal tampering period. Deals get agreed to during this time, but the signings and everything takes place on Wednesday. That's the first day they can sign. Unless of course they were cut before this period. Anyway, uh, so I'll be doing a, a live show on Wednesday night. Join us there and we'll go over the first official day of free agency um, for the for the league, but also obviously focusing on the commanders. In a minute, I'll be joined by the voice of the commanders, Bram Weinstein, as we dive into a free agency preview. What we think could happen or areas that they need to target and why. And there are some things that we, we taped it on Saturday afternoon. So a few things happened on Sunday that somewhat impacts some of the positions we talked about. One of the positions we didn't go too hard on, which, which I would, you know, it's wish I had was receiver because I do think they're going to go there at some point. Um, but anyway, there were a lot of things to discuss where you need starters. I think receiver is going to be a depth one. And you, I certainly think you could go out and find a big receiver in free agency, or maybe somebody, another deep target um, that, that could help them. And I think that's something else, but, but we didn't, but there would be more time to talk about that position as we move forward. And so there you go. Now, the other thing is a couple of things that happened Sunday that impacts free agency. One, center Andre James resigns with the Raiders, three years, twenty-four million, sixteen million guaranteed. He would have been one of the better centers on the free agent market, and we didn't talk a lot about him. But the only reason I bring him up is because of the price tag, three years, twenty-four, sixteen guaranteed. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it could go, what it could look like for one of the better centers. And you got Biotish out there. You've got um, now you have Bradley Bozeman, who's expected to be free. Mitch Morris, who'll be free. Lloyd Cushenberry. So there's a there's a good chance for them to go out and get a veteran center. But we discuss more of that on the show um, later in the show. Isaiah Oliver, a corner, for, used to be in San Francisco. Um, somebody who has had some interest. There, there was some interest here in him. He he would have been a depth um, player at corner. Signs with the Jets. Uh, Mac Jones was traded, of course, to the Jaguars for a sixth round pick. I don't know that Washington's going to trade Sam Howell, but it is like, what if they wanted to, what is the value of him? And I told you a couple weeks ago that the way some of the analytics look at a guy in his position, which is a really good backup um, with the ability to start was they, they assigned it a third round grade. Now, six round grade does not match that. And so I, I even asked somebody how they thought like that trade might impact if this team wanted to trade Sam Howell and they didn't think it would impact in terms of, they still felt felt like they could get more than that. I don't know because Mac Jones, we're talking about a former starter, a uh, former first round pick. And so I don't know, but it, I guess, you know, you look at it and say, it's certainly, I, I think even if you might think a third round value is assigned there, I don't know that you would get that. So anyways, and I don't even know that they're going to try and do that. I think, um, it will be interesting to see what they do with the quarterback position, but Bram and I get into that as well. Um, Bobby Wagner does not sound like he'll go back to, C to Seattle. Uh, again, the heart, obviously Dan Quinn would know him and that he's obviously a very good player. The thing I always wonder about, I always wonder about guys in his position who are aging veterans. First of all, he's always played on the West coast. Secondly, if you're just going to sign a one-year deal, you want it to be somewhere where you can contend unless they just make it worth your while. So, you know, and I, anyways, so I don't know that he, you're looking at him, Tyron Smith, guys like that. If they want the ring, then they're not going to come here. And really, I think that's, that's about it folks. So let's get it um, again. I'll be doing a live stream show on Tuesday night and wrapping up the first day of pregnancy, but, and then I'll have shows on Tuesday and Wednesday morning as well. So anyway, that's it for me for now. Here's my conversation with Bram Weinstein, the voice of the commanders. Bram, it's this time of the year at the big bucks. Look at that. The big I'll take bucks. some of that. Where'd you get all that? 
This is, you know what, you know what this is from? It's from cleaning a closet in our basement where we have all sorts of like birthday stuff. So like, these are things that we'd have when the kids were like really young, which tells you how long ago it's been since we cleaned out our closet, but they are big bucks. So the commanders have some big bucks. They do. They do. And free agency coming up, start, uh, listen, the legal tampering period starts Monday. We know the, the free agency period begins Wednesday. A lot of the big time deals will probably be known before we get to that point. But the expectation for the commanders is, you know, active, but maybe not big splashes. What do you think? Well, let me ask you this. What are your expectations for them for a free agency? My expectations are that they obviously have a lot of holes and they have to spend. Um, I have been primed for the idea that they're not going to swing for the fences and spend a lot of big money on the bigger names. And honestly, I don't think there's a lot of them anyway. If you really look at the pool of players, like they're not in the business of going after Kirk Cousins or Baker Mayfield. Um, I don't think they're in the business of going after a couple of the bigger names at other specific positions. But considering that they have clearly holes on the offensive line that need to be addressed draft and free agency, clearly a massive gap at edge rush, uh, potentially linebacker and corner. Um, I think that there's, there's no way around that they have to spend some money. Um, the question is exactly where and at what level. So we can go through some of that, but yeah. I, I expect them to spend, but I, I don't know unless it's Bryce Huff. Um, I don't know where they would spend in a big way, honestly. And you know, it's funny, Brian, that you say that because I was looking at the list too. And like, well, who are the big, because you keep hearing, they're not going to have the big splash signing, but, but they do have to sell a lot. So who would be the big splashes? And there aren't a lot of guys no. that would say, well, this would be the big splash. And, you know, they're not going to go out and sign Kirk Cousins and give him half of their salary cap. Correct. It just wouldn't make sense because they do need a lot. So what are some of the positions that you would target? If you had to say, here are the top three positions I would target in free agency, what would they be? Uh, number one is edge rush. Um, I think they need to do something there. I mean, like, let, let's go on the assumption that they are going to keep the number two overall pick and they are right. going to select a quarterback. Okay. Um, well, they need an edge rusher. That's something that you might take in the first or early second round. They need at least one tackle. That is something you would usually take in the first or second round. So that being the case, I don't think you can answer all of these questions in the draft, even with what they have. And we could talk about scenarios with those two second round picks where I would buy into um, the idea of packaging them to move back into the first round to take a tackle because there's a lot of them in the draft. But you know, do you think Andrew Wiley is your starter at right tackle and you know you have a definitive hole at left tackle? So we're talking about one, maybe two new starting tackles, and that has to be addressed in free agency. I, I don't see any way around that. Now, um, this year, and this is most years, that is a premier position that doesn't often lend to big names being available to you. Right. So there are some, and there are some worth looking at. But the question is, are they going to overpay for one of these players because it is a specific need? And that's what I'm going to be watching for here really early. Like Jonah Williams, former first round pick available, Cincinnati Bengals, right? Because it is not a saturated market at the position uh, and because this is always a need, what is the price point for someone like him? And it's probably like over what his value actually is. So how badly do they want to get, and I'm just using him as an example, no, how great. badly do they want to get someone of that level that might not be a top five, seven tackle, but it's a clear need and they need to upgrade. So what's the price point? And I don't know how Adam Peters and Dan Quinn and company and Martin Mayhew and all those and Lance Newmark and all those guys, I don't know how they think yet. We're going to find out a lot right. about this new management this week. They got money to spend. They got holes to fill, but you know, I don't see the obvious oh, they're going to go after this particular player target, even though there's obviously needs there. So let's stick with Jonah Williams because he does. And here's my only, my other thing with Wiley that you go out, let's say you go out and get Jonah Williams. I would still draft a tackle. Yes. And then I would consider putting Wiley to left guard where I think he would be better, a better fit. So and then you that, still have another tackle that you need. Like, well, remember, that. Like, it's possible would, we have two new starting well, tackles. It's that's just, what this I just said. has to be addressed here. Right, that's what I said. I would draft one. And I would also sign one. So there are your tackles are, are to me are not on the roster. And then I would put Wiley inside. So I would do what you said, either take one early in the second round or move up into back into the first. Yes. The Jonah Williams one is interesting because started off as a left tackle was the Bengals 
push the way they sign Orlando Brown, they go and push it, move him to right tackle where he does fairly well. I wouldn't mm-hmm. say great, but fairly well. And so, you know, I think the, the question for him is, does he see himself as a left tackle or right tackle? Cause that's going to impact your price, but he would be an interesting guy, right? Yes, he would be interesting. And this is for lack of names. Like there are other position groups, like clearly they made an interesting choice on camp curl. Well, you see how saturated the safety market is all of a sudden. And we can get to that in a minute, but in the case of like left tackle, and this is normal, most premium left tackles are never allowed to get to this point, which is why um, you have to make a choice of what's the price point going to be for a player who isn't Trent Williams. So I don't know how they're thinking about all of that. There's a couple of other names, like George Fant is out there from Houston. That's a possibility for them. Mike Onwayu is available from New England. But again, you know, these aren't top five players that are really going to warrant top five type salaries. Right. But because there may not be a, you know, there's not a heavy market of players, uh, there is the obvious like outcome that these guys are going to get more money on the open market for teams of need. Washington's one of them. So I'm waiting to see what that looks like for them. I have a feeling they're going to spend at this position because I don't think they have much of a choice. And I feel the same way about edge rusher. I think they need to spend a little bit here because they really don't have a choice. Well, and that's the thing. And and we know they want to build through the draft. But when you're building through the draft, typically you supplement your starting lineup with free agents. So I could also see, Bram, a, situ- a scenario where maybe you sign a couple guys because you have the cap room and you don't want to saddle yourself with a lot of um, maybe bad, what you might consider bad contracts down the road. Maybe you sign a couple of these guys to one year deals because you can do it this year. And, and, you know, maybe that gives you some flexibility with some other players. Now, if you're, you know, Jonah Williams or Nwanu, the kid from new England who can also, who also played right guard. And I think there's a debate where he would be better, but you know, he certainly, you could put him at right tackle, um, but if you don't get one of those guys, maybe you sign a guy to a one-year deal to get through and then and not settle with a, a bad contract and draft some guys that you hope can develop into that the following year. Um, and I think you could use that at a couple of different positions. I don't know if a tackle, I tackle, I'd like to get someone who's going to be there a couple of years. Same with center. I think you've got yeah. to get a center in free agency. I think that's a possibility too. I don't know what they think of Ricky Stromberg. Obviously it's a whole new staff and he was drafted relatively high last year as a pure center out of Arkansas. So I think that's possible. Obviously he had a bad injury, but I'm assuming he's going to be fine by the time, you know, training camp rolls around. I don't know how they feel about him. So that that's, that, that'll be an interesting one to follow, but I agree with you. I don't think there's a starting center here. Um, I do think it's a possibility dependent on how you look at Wiley. And I do believe that Cosme is a carryover and a starter that you have potentially your two guards. If that's how you look at it, they may look at Wiley as a right tackle as well. I'm not really sure. So we'll have to like see where that fits. The guard market is one that got, you know, looked like it was going to be flush with a lot of very good options that suddenly closed up before free agency opened. Ezra Cleveland resigned. Um, Brandon Sheriff, I believe, is going to end up resigning here. Um, there was a third prominent one that also resigned recently. So do you want to spend a tremendous amount of money on, say, Robert Hunt out of Miami? I don't know. Like, do you want to spend there? My gut says it's going to be a tackle because they have to get a tackle. Right. And with center, you know, again, I don't know how they're thinking about these these two second round picks. You might be able to get a really, really good center out of the draft. That's a deep position again in the draft this it's year. Not, it, get one. It's not, but it's not as strong. There's a couple of guys that would be a couple of top in the top rounds. Yeah. So yeah, that's a possibility. My concern brand would be pairing a center, a, a rookie center with a rookie quarterback. I don't Yeah, I'm like a little worried idea. about a rookie left tackle with a rookie quarterback too. So well, I think the like reason the, I say it, but the, the yeah. calling out protection signals is major. So yes. I think they're going to need, I think you want to have someone who can help a rookie quarterback with that, regardless of who it is. And so like Tyler Biadish from, yes. from Dallas, now, you know, is he a $10 million a year guy? I don't know. And I don't know that you have to pay that much. Lloyd Cushenberry is another one. Mitch Morris from Buffalo. Now, by the time this comes out, Morris may already be signed somewhere. Yeah. But he's another guy who's got a few years left who can play. And they, you know, I think a big key too is considered a really good locker room guy. So, you know, I think those are things you look at. But but I like I know with Stromberg, I I had talked to somebody here earlier this offseason who kind of not necessarily on the coach staff so you don't know what the coach I don't know what the coaches think of him 
I yeah. do think they'd have be hesitant to give him that job, but somebody thought he maybe was better going to be better as a backup interior lineman. So, you know, we'll see, but I would still go get one for that reason. But yes, I, you're, you're right. But that's why I like you, you have to get a veteran tackle. And, yes. And, and, um, and at some yeah, point, and obviously like, and we'll, we'll talk about Russia and stuff too. I mean, like there's a couple of prominent ex Dallas players with Dan Quinn coming over from Dallas. He's going to know these players better. So Biotish is definitely a possibility. Connor Williams is a very good, I think, option for them, although coming off a late Hurt. season injury, he yeah. was in Miami, but I think similarly is a possibility here. But I agree with you. Like there could be some money spent on a center. I think there's no way around that they have to go get a tackle for sure. And then other side of the ball, like screams, potential linebackers. You got to think about corner and definitely edge rusher. So let's go to edge rusher because – like you said, there are two guys in Dallas I think we have to keep an eye on, Dorrance Armstrong and Dante yeah. Fowler Jr. Fowler has been, like Quinn has liked that guy for a long time because, again, he recruited him at Florida, had him in Atlanta, had him in Dallas. So you kind of do the math there. But I would view him more as a rotational guy, not a starter. So right. the guys that you look at, Dorrance Armstrong, would be a starter here. And, you know, I don't, yes, think gonna, and they I don't know think him that. and they could bring him in. And so that's, it makes too much sense. I'm waiting for a couple of Cowboys to come here because for just to follow, it's just typical practice that you get a couple of guys that, you know, right. and I think that's distinct possibility for sure that he could be someone that's here. But if you're looking for a starter starter, I think you have a couple of choices here, um, but they're going to be high money ones. So like, do you, you like Daniel Hunter? He is available right now. Um, I don't know why Minnesota doesn't want to resign him. He's a high level rush end. Um, more traditional defensive end, but rush end. Uh, do you like Zadarius Smith, who's become a mercenary? Do you want to take a shot on Jadavion Clowney, who's become a mercenary? Or the player that I really like, if they're going to spend, spend, and I think there's going to be a brisk market for him, is Bryce Huff, who I think is a legitimate rush end option for someone um, off of the Jets. And my inclination is the only reason why he's not being re-signed in New York is they have, not unlike Washington had a couple of years ago, or really even last year, a glut of defensive linemen. They can only pay so many of them. And so he becomes available. He's the one that I would target. If you're going to take a swing and spend a lot of money, specifically in a position of need, position of need, that's who I'd go for if I was in the front office. But I think there's going to be a lot of competition for him because I think he might be best available at his age right. and the promise. And it may be a lot of money. And, you know, I don't know how they feel about wanting to spend the top dollar for somebody, but that's the name that I would watch if they were going to take a swing at somebody. So if they're going to spend for a defensive end, they had one here. They didn't have to get rid of to Correct. spend on. So that would be my issue that the way that you just the, the Montez sweat trade to me signals that they're, they, again, what I was told at the time build through the middle. So that means, are you going to maybe not invest quite as much as a defensive end in free agency? Now, I, to me, I would draft one, but the other guy, like you brought up Zadarius Smith, this is where I would say you can, just like Zach Ertz, you can afford some of these one-year guys that you yes. think maybe can help set a tone for your group, for your, lo for your locker room, whatever. And like, that's where a guy like him would, he would make sense. But again, I think Dorrance Armstrong is a guy that you could look at. He can start here for a few years. And I think that's why I think he just makes a lot of sense. And then um, the, the other guy is Cleland Farrell from San Francisco, who yep. is more who drafted fourth overall, but he's become more of a run stopper and was playing ahead of Chase Young before he got hurt as a, on the early downs. So, but I, it sounds like the 49ers like him. So I don't know that he would even be free, but you know, Adam Peters obviously would know him and th that's more that, but again, that's a bargain type guy, right? That's not a top mm -hmm. end type guy, but linebacker would be another area too, that I think you could get a solid guy for decent money. Oh, I think they're, they're going to sign one, maybe two to. at that position. And I think, you know, that's not in general, like, Okay, so let's, I don't, you know, if we're going on this premise that they're not going out there to spend a ton of money for the top tier people just about anywhere, then I think that takes someone like Patrick Queen off the board for them, because I think he's going to end up getting a pretty sizable contract as kind of a pure middle linebacker. I don't know if I'm going to go that direction, but there are a couple that are out there that I want to watch. Aziz Al Shahir is got connection straight from San Francisco. He was in yep. Tennessee. I think there's a possibility there. 
Terrell Dotson was kind of a backup slash starter for Buffalo. Buffalo's had kind of a purge of a number of their, you know, older players, which also in the edge rush side too, again, if there's the right price for AJ Epinesa, I would be very interested in him. He reminds me actually a lot of we've faced Hassan Reddick the last couple of years where he may not have these gaudy numbers, but he's a very smart player. And he seems to have these kind of penchant for these big moment plays on big spots, smart player, controls the edge, good rusher, sneaky rusher. You know, like I think that there's a possibility there if the price is right to bring someone like that in. But again, he's not going to be an every down dominant edge rushing type player. And I think that's what we're falling into here. There's not a lot of these available. Uh, And there's a couple other linebackers I would watch. I, I mean, Bobby Wagner has spent his whole career on the West Coast. I just have a hard time buying he'd come over here for even if it was for a year. Willie Gay had a nice run in Kansas City. I think it's a name you got to watch. Again, Terrell Dotson out of Buffalo, I think might be a pretty good solution for you. Maybe not a high-end linebacker, but a solution. And Frankie Lubu from Carolina is a pretty good player, too, who's also available. So I think they have some more options there. I don't think the price tag is going to be particularly high for any of them, unless you want Patrick Queen and... I'm just kind of of the mindset that that's not how this team is thinking. I don't, and I don't think they are either. And I think one of the other issues with Queen, and I don't know, this is like just in doing my own research, he's not a guy that had been calling signals for Baltimore. That's Roquan Smith. And, and you know, even before Roquan got there, I don't think he had, that was a main job for him. And I only bring that up because I think when you have Jamin there, you're going to want someone else next to him who's calling the signal. So if there, that's why I look at like Aziz El Shair from Tennessee, who again, was with San Francisco, and I had I had heard that Adam Peters was there liked him. Now, what that means for free agency, I don't know. The Niners yeah. probably like him still, and the Titans like him, so he may end up sticking around. But I think he'd be a guy to watch because he'd be in that price point too, and he fills some of the what they would what I was just talking about, calling signals and all that. And I think Luvu, the guy from Carolina, same way. But I also it sounds like the Panthers would like him back as well. Now. Whether you you want a guy back, can you get it done? And but I think he would also be a guy that would fit that bill um, as well. And I know that you were big on having David Mayo come in as a starter as a, on a big deal. So, <laughs> so moving on, moving on. <laughs> but you know, and it's at at and this is a linebacker who's more of a pass rusher, but scored a touchdown against these guys, Andrew Van Ginkle. Yeah. He's a pass rusher, and like. The reason yes. I bring him up is because when you look, when you hear, listen to Dan Quinn, you listen to him talk about how to maximize positionless players. And I don't know that I would necessarily qualify him as positionless, but does he give you some of that versatility, uh, you know, as an, uh, uh, just as an overall player and a, and a pass rush specialist in that role. And I don't know yeah. that, I don't know that he would fit or not, but I, that's just, you know, way. I think this goes into an overarching theme, especially on that side of the ball, where they obviously are going to sign a couple of players because they need to. They have needs. They can't fill it all through the draft. They've got to go get some players that are going to end up being starters. And what you are going to hear a sell to the fan base, and I'm not sure that it's the wrong one at this point until proven otherwise because of track record, is that this coaching staff is going to get players that they're going to maximize, even if they are not splash players. Like you're not getting... Like Joey Bosa apparently is available for a trade. This team isn't going to go make that trade for him. But if you go get someone like that, the expectation level is very high just because you know what the talent level is. If they go out and get AJ Epinesa or Aziz Al Shair or some of these other guys who are kind of lower tier, not name brand players, but could be very effective, then what they're going to push is watch what our results have been by putting these players into our system and how it's worked out for us. And we're going to have to buy that for a while because again, like I really don't see the positions where the splash players are, are not positions this team is actually targeting in a year where they have all this cap space. So they're not going to, in my opinion, unless they surprise me, sign somebody that is going to wow you with name power, but they're going to tell you that they're going to make them effective players and maybe better than what their price point actually is. Yeah. And I, and everything I've always heard about Adam Peters is second wave of free agency type guy. And that's what the expectation has been. And, and I have zero problem with that because as we've seen over the years, the big splash, the, you know, and I, this doesn't mean they don't sign anybody on the first day. I, I think they, I mean, I don't know that they will, 
but I but I would kind of anticipate that they would because they can. And I think oh, they're gonna, cap room. How do they not? Well, right, right. <laughs> they I, but the, only I, the only reason I bring that up, the only reason I say that is because when I say second wave, it doesn't mean they're going to sit there, wait, 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 and then go. But I think they're going to get the, that secondary type guy and maybe get them right away, which I think is a good strategy. And there, I think you're what you want is get some solid guys in here and then get some of the blue chip guys in the draft because that's where they haven't that's where you need to get your blue chip guys is through the draft. And that's where they have really, really failed to do so in yeah. recent years, and especially in those first second round picks. And that's where they're available. And it yeah. just hasn't panned out that way. So that's, that's where, that's where I'd spend my money. Um, or I mean, that's, but so like the other thing is too, and we've seen like Cleveland went out and traded for Jerry Judy. They could also, if they wanted to take on some contracts, I don't know that they would, because I think they they really want that draft capital. So I don't know that they would do that, but you could also do something if you want to do something with John Allen's contract and just, and push some money more onto this year to, to help soften the blow for the future and keep building that way. I mean, the, the cap space doesn't have to be used in all free agents. It can be used in creative ways. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other spot that we haven't really talked about yet, and I do think there are some names that are worth watching there too, is corner. Yeah. Um, they have not re-signed Kendall Fuller as of yet. I have not heard much about that. Um, you know, I would, here's how I would look at him personally, because I would like to have him back if dependent on what the price point is on him. I don't think I'd want a long-term deal. I would want something in a two, three year range at most yeah. with him. Um, because you know, he was struggling with some injuries towards just down the stretch. And, you know, I think that's something that needs to be taken into account, but without him, uh, there is clearly a void of who is a number one or one a corner dependent on how they view Forbes heading into the season. So I think that they have to go get a corner too, whether that's Fuller or somebody else. And there are some good names that are actually out there that will, you know, in some cases, Xavier and Howard's going to cost you a lot of money. That's why I don't think they would go that direction. Stefan Gilmore. I don't know what the price is loved playing for Dan Quinn and Joe Witt. So there's another X, at least for a year cowboy that I think is very possible. And that could be a, decent number for a year or two to be primarily their number one corner for a year. And I'd look at Kenny Moore from Indianapolis as well. This is a guy who does get his hands on the ball a lot. Obviously this is a team that, you know, prides itself now on being hopefully the new turnover machine of the NFC East now that they're no longer in Dallas. And so he's a name I would watch too, to see, um, you know, what the price point is for him. But, you know, I think clearly corner is something that they need yes. to look at as well. And I think the hard part with a guy like Gilmore, same thing with Tyron Smith, the tackle from Dallas, you know, and even like Zadaria Smith, they're, they're approaching the end of their careers. Yeah. What they really want to come here on a one-year deal. And I have a hard time believing that unless they don't have the options, because you're at that point, you want to go try to win. And <laughs> I don't think we're looking at this team this year as that place. Now in a couple of years, Maybe they are, but I don't, that would be my one hesitation from their perspective, more less from Washington's perspective. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, who knows, but I mean, like with Dallas's cap situation and having, you know, done nothing about Dak's contract at this point, I don't think they're re-signing Gilmore. So I think that that's going to be off no. the board for them with Trayvon Diggs coming back and the year that Bland had, um, I don't see how they're spending whatever the number is and they don't have the cap flexibility to really do it with players like that. So he's out there. And so that, that could be a short-term solution for them while they develop Forbes or go draft another corner. But I do think it is, it clearly is a void here if Fuller is not coming back. And and I don't think the market is so deep that it's going to, that you can wait around for guys too, because no. you know, like Kendall Fuller is considered one of the better free agents. You look at some of the analyst lists and Kendall Fuller is higher up there than you would like. And I think he's a, a good corner. Yeah. And, but where he's at in terms of the rankings of free agents available is probably a little bit higher than you anticipate is, you know, he's not a pro bowl corner. He's not anything like that, but he's a good corner and yes. good corners are hard to find. And so the, the, like you said, the question with him is more about health and he's dealt. It's funny. Cause I asked him about the knee cause it, it seemed to bother him more this year than other years. But yeah. he said, he's like, I asked him about that. He goes, cause I've been dealing with this my whole career, but as you get older, it's harder to deal with. And he is yeah. 29. And, you know, I would, if you can bring him back on a decent deal, I would do that because I think he can still play, can still help them. I think he's the kind of guy they would like, but that's where that position, you're right. Like that's going to be a hard one 
to fill. And that's where like, I'd be okay with them signing Gilmore. I just don't know if Gilmore would want to come here yeah. if it's your, you know, you're going to be 33, 34 years old. Uh, yeah. I'm interested in him for a short-term bridge. If he's interested in that. Right. I'm interested in Kenny Moore, you know, if the price point is correct. And also, I would look at Chibade Awuzie from Cincinnati, who is a very good corner, but got injured. Um, so I obviously want to know, you know, his knee's okay at this point, but he's another one that I would watch. You know, I think corner is something they have to address in free agency. Yeah, no, I, I think agree. edge is something they have to address in free agency. Yep. I think tackle is something they have to address in free agency. You might be right. Center might be something they have to address in I, free agency. There's no way, like, they could sit there and say we're not going to swing for the fences. So that would take people like Daniil Hunter off the board right. for them or Xavier Howard off the board for them. But it doesn't mean they can't spend, and right. they know they have these holes. So I do expect them to be very active in the market. They have the money to spend. They got the holes. Um, the question is, what are the price points going to be, and what are they going to stomach for it? Because they are going to overpay for a couple of people because of out of need and because the market isn't, you know, really favorable for the positions that they want, in my opinion, then, you know, then their safety. And I'll yeah. be very interested to see what they do. You know, obviously they played at least from market conditions, the cam curl thing correctly by not tagging him, but they may lose him now. And I'll be very interested. To, and I think we all will to see what is his number now that he's in the most saturated position that is out in free agency. There is a long list of safeties available do they feel really good with Quan Martin and Derek Force that they don't feel like they have to spend for that position? Do they want Curl back at the right price if he's open to it? Would they just go in a different direction? Do they feel like they could upgrade from Curl at a not terrible price as well because of the saturation in the marketplace? So that's another position I'm watching. I don't see that as the massive need as I see some of these other positions for them but they might be able to get a pretty good deal with that position. So, and I agree with you. And the hard part for Cam Curl, again, I think we all agree he's a good player. Yes. But he has the, the hard part for him is when you're looking at this and you want to get the big payday, it's going to the playmakers. And that is not what he has been. You can just look at the stats. But I do think he's a good player. But, you know, and I said this on the show the other day, I talked to someone who really, really likes him, who felt like he'd be in that six to $8 million a year range. Now, I don't, I, you know, and that, I think the way this market is getting depressed, I think that could be the case. I will say, Bram, again, one of the things at the trade deadline, I go back to that because this is what you heard. And this is coming from, you know, high up, obviously, that they want to build like the analytics show, build through the middle. That means center, quarterback, right? And then it means ta defensive tackles. It means in guards, it means defensive tackles. It means linebacker and safety. And Dan Quinn does like to use a lot of three safety sets. So while well, you have Quan Martin and Derek Forrest, if, you know, it's funny because you go back to the one year guy or a couple year guy, like, I really like Justin Simmons. I don't know that I, I don't know what his deal would look like. I think he'd be a guy I would love to have because he can still play and he's got all the qualities you'd want. The other thing, Bram, if you're getting a he guy- He will be back, top of the market. Whatever, right, and I don't know what top of the market is for that position. Right. That's the interesting part. I don't know and, what top of the market is for that position at this point, but he will be. And I agree with you. And that would be the hard one, but like that would be, so I agree with that. But what I would want from that position, if you're getting somebody there, if you can get a veteran there, and I know J Ron curse is another guy from Dallas, yeah. obviously Quinn and, and Witt know him, but I need to, I would want a guy that is a really good communicator because that's something I think they need in that secondary. And it's something that they have, you know, they haven't had, they didn't have it last year. I think that would be a big, to me, that somebody, if I'm getting that, you got those two young guys, give me a vet who's really good communicator. I agree. I will also, and this is not to, to I, I hate going back in the past, but like one of the big complaints from the players from last year was just how complicated everything yes. ended up being back there. Um, and I think things just went sideways on this team and that really kind of exacerbated everything. Um, something that Quinn and Joe Witt talked about was yep. simplification. And in that case, like, I, listen, I am totally cool with Cam Curl coming back. We can get come to an agreement with him. I think he's a very good player. Um, I don't think he's a game-changing player, but he's a very good player. And in this new defense, I'm sure he would be just fine playing for them. But, you know, the fact that they've allowed it to get to this point, which I think is the right thing to do and probably, you know, unfortunately for him, he's not going to get the numbers he probably thought he was going to get because he just happens to be in probably the most depressed market of this free agency cycle. But let's just see where he ends up and where does he want to be. And I think the other thing is, I don't know that he's that, 
that big time communicator that you would have. So, but I, the guy I think could develop into that could be Quan Martin. And yeah. I think you saw some of that evidence of that later in the year where I thought he did a really good job of directing things, calling things out, et cetera. So as long as you have, they, you know, as long as one of those guys can handle that aspect, but I do agree with you. I think some of that comes back to, you know, the, the simpler, I don't want, it's not going to be a simplified, it's not going to be a simple scheme, but the one thing, and we talked about this, like the, the knock on Del Rio from players and even from some others on the staff was that as they, as the, as more and more issues arose, it got more and more complicated instead of going the other way. And so there were, and and you heard, I'd hear coaches talk about there are too many layers. And then when I remember hearing Quinn at his his press conference referred to not having so many layers, because then it's, you know, if, if this guy's going to motion rather, it's like, we'll just be simple, stay in this look rather than, Oh, do this, this, and this, and this. And it would change so much that it would make it complicated. And if you do that, then you can have any of those guys back there because they all can do that. So yeah. Yeah. So one other thing that I'm interested in looking at is um, how are they going to use Jamin Davis this year? Um, are they going to move him closer to the line of scrimmage, have him be more of a rush ends the wrong word, but like someone who's on the edge and is more utilized for his athleticism up front, less in coverage. And so maybe they're looking at him as let's find out what he can do in that role as well. And, you know, can he emerge like an Epinesa or someone like that? Could he be something like that for them? So I'll be interested to see how they're looking at him for next year as well. Well, I think a big part for him is what they want to analyze is what kind of a blitzer is he? Can he be an effective blitzer? Now, there's he did line up oftentimes in other spots. Like he would definitely would be on the outside and and come in, you know, as a as a rusher off the edge or whatever. So I am curious too to see how they use him. But I think the number one thing they're going to try and see is what kind of a blitzer is he and can he help in that area. And, but he's not going to be, you know, he's certainly not a Micah Parsons where he's going to be lining up all over the place with his hand in the dirt, doing this, doing that, but you can move him around a little bit. And they did do some of that, but again, I think it's, and you know, there were times he was okay with it, but it's also then who's next to you doing that, right? If you yep. have better pass rushers next to you, you have a, a better chance to get home on that. So I agree with you. I think he's going to be an interesting one to watch in this defense. Yeah, and there's like two other spots that I, I don't know they're going to do anything with, but I think are just worth mentioning. There's a lot of running backs available. Um, I don't think this team is, you know, looking for a high-end price one for sure, but like someone like DeAndre Swift, what's the price point for him? Like, you know, Injury. Gibson may or may not be back. So like, what's the price point there? Uh, does Kingsbury like him? You know, someone like that. I don't think we're in the market for Derrick Henry or Saquon Barkley or anything like that, but I think like Swift I'd watch. And then quarterback, I mean, like, are they looking at a different veteran quarterback on the assumption that they're going to, you know, draft somebody with the number two overall pick? And, you know, what does it signal if they do that? Is there a market for Hal? Do they want Hal back as a primary backup here, no matter who they select? I think a lot's going to be, you know, shown this week with that too. There are prominent people like Drew Locke or, Tyrod Taylor or Tyler Huntley or Josh Dobbs who are going to be available, Jacoby Brissett for that matter. And I don't think he's coming back here, but who knows? Like there are prominent, like clear cut, good backup veteran quarterbacks. And, you know, I'll make a case for, they are going to get a rookie quarterback in here. You know, oftentimes teams want a veteran behind them for a lot of reasons. And so I, you know, like this will be very, very interesting to see how they kind of handle that. Is Hal here to stay? Is there a market emerging for him? Like, let's find out what happens this week with him as well. I think that's a good point because I'm I'm with you. Typically, you're going to like that or want that. I will say Hal can be, I guess the other question would be, and I don't know that they can even answer this because they really haven't spent enough time around Hal to know what, how would he be in that role, even though he's only in his third year. But tip, you know, you would want someone who's been around a lot more who has seen a lot more situations and maybe has experience in this in, under, you know, in a Kingsbury offense or something yeah. similar to that. Now, and, and the funny thing is how kind of does, cause he played it in college, but they're so they're different. It's not like every air raid system is exact same. And I know, you know, um, Kingsbury talked about how it's not going to be the air raid necessarily. Well, the passing game is going to be a, certainly not going to be morph into what Scott Turner ran or what, you know, what Kansas city ran It's still going to be a variation of that. So yeah, yeah, I think that's something to watch too. And Brissett would be great, but it does sound like, you know, I haven't heard any momentum in that way. 
Um, so. I think he. I think he's going to spend this. You know, I, I think he's going to try to vie to get into a spot where he can compete to be a yeah, starter. Again. I agree. And I that's do. clearly not going to be here. If we're no. going to use the number of two overall pick on the quarterback. Right. No, he came and he's came here last year off a, a good year with the Browns. And if I'm him, I want to go somewhere like you only have so many more chances to compete for a starting job. Go somewhere you can do that. Yeah. And then with running back, I would just opt for the draft. And I, you know, I know like I agree, like DeAndre Swift would be a good option. I have some concerns about health. And um, I would just be, I wouldn't want to spend on that position with you have Robinson, you have Rodriguez, but he's a guy like his style certainly makes sense. Um, yeah. I'd like to, I just, you know, on him, I'd like to see what the price point is. That's yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I listen, anybody that if you can get a good player at a, at a premium cost or a low, low cost, perfect. Yes. And, and you know, the other thing is I, you know, it's funny because a lot of these, we're talking about a lot of some of these one-year deals I would like to get a couple guys if I'm them that will be here for a few years who are again, not break the bank guys, but the Dorrance Armstrong types that could be here for a few years as a starter who can help you as you progress through it where, and then get a couple guys like the Zach Ertz of the world who can help you transition to becoming a better team, but not occupy a lot of cap space and yep. keep that flex. Cause I think the number one thing for them going forward, Bram is cap flexibility and all these draft picks. And when in San Francisco, they built it through the draft. And yep. you, know, you want to look at when you look at the Niners and the, and the Chiefs and the Super Bowl, all, like what, 15, 16 starters on both those teams were coming from the draft. So that's right. how you have to look at it. So, yeah, last one too. And I don't know if it'll be addressed this week, but Joey Sly's not under contract. So they don't have no. a kicker. Um, yeah. So like, obviously that's going to have to be addressed. I don't know when, but it, it will be. And in, you know, we're taping this Saturday. So <laughs> who knows Sunday, what can happen? And if, and if something happens Sunday, well, there you go. But anyways, big money week, Bram. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, see you. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Bram for joining me. And thank you, as always, for tuning in. I'll be back with another show Tuesday as we dig deeper into free agency and take a look at all sorts of angles that affect the commanders. I'll talk to you next time.